uh, we are talking about uh, the joining or more specifically the welding uh, the joining can be performed as I said using the various approaches uh, like the plastic deformation, fuse on use of adhesives or even use of uh, mechanical joints like nuts, bolts, rivets, etc. Uh, but in this uh, subject or in this chapter, primarily we have to talk about the fusion um, joining or the welding based uh, approaches. So for the welding uh, uh, of the two components, what we need, we need to apply the heat okay so heat can be applied through su suitable source now this uh, this you can say as a heat source this heat source helps to uh, increase the temperature of the edges of the plates to be joined and then these are brought to the molten state okay so this heat source uh, can be of different types like it can be arc so amount of the heat generated by the arc is a found a function of welding current i and the voltage uh, between the electrode and the arc which usually ranges say from 50 to 1000 ampere and the voltage may vary from say 10 to 100 volt okay so the welding process is known to be a low voltage and high current process uh, basically the current is adjusted to increase the heat input while the voltage is maintained considering the given electrode characteristics okay so this is one uh, of the uh, source of the heat there is another source of heat which is commonly used is uh, chemical reactions no chemical reactions so there is one process which is based on the chemical reaction is thermite welding in thermite welding what we do we use the mixture of powders like iron oxide fe2o3 and it is mixed with the aluminum it is heated little bit so that exothermic reactions take place and that in turn results in the formation of the iron molten iron and the al2o3 plus lot of the exothermic heat is generated which is used for fusing the, the, the base metal components or the edges of the plates to be welded. So this is one. Likewise, other uh, like copper, if the copper is to be welded, then we will be using the, let's say, copper mixture, CuO and the aluminium. Okay. So here, uh, this uh, will be producing the, this will be giving us the uh, Cu twice Cu plus Al2O3 okay plus lot of exothermic heat is generated so this is the another approach where exothermic reactions are used to generate the heat and uh, and uh, bring the things to the molten state uh, then uh, the other approach of the chemical reaction based is use of the uh, the fuel gases like you will be knowing LPG, propane, likewise there is acetylene very commonly used gas for generating the heat for welding as well as cutting purposes because it generates lot of heat and the high peak temperature. Okay, so the peak temperature in case of acetylene is say around 3100 degree centigrade while for others it is very low. Okay, so here uh, say if uh, when the uh, the fuel gas plus oxygen mixture is burned then it produces a typical flame like this so it has two commonly it has two cones but there can be three zones or cones you can say so this is the outer one and th this is the inner one okay so different reactions take place in the inner as well as the outer ones say for example in outer inner one obviously the first of all inner uh, uh, reactions in the inner cone will be taking place so we are feeding the acetylene and the oxygen mixture and these two will be burning at the tip of the nozzle so this is the nozzle and what reactions take place in the 
inner core uh, which generates the maximum temperature of around 3100 degree centigrade while the outer cone is of the low temperature say 1275 or so 1275 or so degree centigrade while if you see uh, the kind of reactions which are taking place uh, so peak temperature is in the inner cone that is the uh, and then the outer cone is this where temperature is low around 1275 or so okay so the kind of reactions which take place in the inner cone include like c2h2 plus o2 equal to uh, like twice of co plus h2 plus 18.75 megajoule per mm cube of the acetylene you are burning for complete combustion okay so this is the amount of heat being generated through the exothermic reactions okay and the temperature the rise is of 3100 degree centigrade in inner core this is important thing the heat generated is 18.75 and the temperature generated is 3100 degree centigrade if you talk of outer cone then the story is little different here in the outer cone the kind of reactions which take place is like the 4 co carbon monoxide okay plus uh, twice of the hydrogen plus twice of the oxygen so these two will be leading to the 4 co2 plus twice of h2o okay then lot of of, uh, heat is also generated and that is um, uh, exothermic reaction taking place in the secondary zone or the outer zone so that heat generated in the outer zone is 35.77 mega joule per mm cube so now you have to see here this difference okay the difference is what uh, when your nozzle having inner cone and the outer cone outer cone is having temperature around 1275 inner cone is 3100 degree centigrade outer cone is generating the heat of 30 uh, 5.77 mega joule per uh, meter cube of the acetylene burn while it is uh, less for 18.75 uh, uh, mega joule for uh, uh, uh per meter cube of the acetylene burn okay so lesser heat is generated but the peak temperature is high because whatever heat is generated that is localized over a small area of the inner cone okay uh, and further this inner cone is surrounded by the hot zone of the outer cone okay so the heat loss is not much rise in temperature is great uh, while uh, despite of having the greater heat generation in the outer cone or in the secondary zone uh, the large surface area of the secondary zone or outer cone dissipates a lot of heat to the atmospheric gases say which are at 24 degree centigrade that's why the, despite of having the high heat generation in the secondary zone the peak temperature is limited to the 1275 so this is the logic that uh, how, the temperature of the gases uh, to which the particular zone is exposed and the amount of heat being generated and it is getting localized these two things need to be considered while um, taking a view of the peak temperature being generated in the primary and the secondary zones despite of the difference in the heat being generated so the surface area and the temperature of the gases with which these are surrounded these zones are surrounded that brings in the difference of the peak temperature being uh, realized in a particular zone okay so uh, this is, uh, is the another uh, example of the chemical reactions the third way of heat generation to develop the joint is the electrical resistance heating you know about this this is also called joule heating okay in joule heating it is simple i square rt 
So what we do, the plates through which uh, the current is passed, say the current I is passed through these plates, okay, for and if uh, the interfacial contact resistance is R, and the current uh, is flowed for uh, say for t then heat generated at the interface is given by i square rt uh, there is another method which is used for solid state joining that is a friction based approach so the components to be joined are rubbed against each other under some kind of the normal pressure so due to the friction heat is generated so the frictional heat heat due to the friction is given by mu is the coefficient of friction f is the uh, say uh, a normal force is uh, n applied and the, uh, v is the relative velocity so a friction uh, force multiplied by the velocity gives you the frictional heat friction force is obtained through the like the coefficient of friction and the normal force uh, normal load being applied so these are the three approaches so this heat uh, frictional heat softens the metal or the thing surfaces of the component to be joined um, for developing the joint in the solid state okay in this case the the fusion is hardly hardly realized it is not realized mostly it is uh, about uh, the mostly it is about uh, the softening and then plastic deformation to develop the joint uh, now coming to the the welding and the common terms associated with the welding let's say uh, that most commonly used the groove to weld joint okay so what are the common terms related with this and another one is the fillet weld joint so groove weld joint uh, say uh, this is a square groove the two plates uh, edges are just made square and you after fusion you make uh, the edges uh, bring the edges to the molten state and then after solidification you get uh, the joint okay so here what we see uh, this is the root of the weld okay the gap between the plates is called the root gap okay uh, this uh, the top portion is called the face of the weld and the gap the the, the this measurement uh, uh, width of the weld you can say it like this so this distance uh, is termed as the width width of weld uh, the height of the weld bead above the plate is called a reinforcement this one reinforcement okay uh, then uh, this one is called bead angle angle which is being formed by the bead at the toe of the weld so the junction between the plate and the bead weld is called toe of the weld t o e okay uh, so uh, face uh, there is another very commonly used term like when uh, the plates uh, being welded the heat is applied so the distance up to which melting takes place this is called the the penetration okay this is called the penetration the, the depth up to which uh, the melting is being realized say this is the surface and if you are applying the heat the depth up to which melting takes place that will be the depth of penetration okay mm, and uh, it is expected that depth of penetration is uh, high enough or through thickness so that the weld can be made in a single pass say these are the plates uh, to be joined uh, like this in the view so before uh, performing the welding to keep the plates in position we make the randomly the small welds here and there so that the relative position between the plates is maintained these welds are called tack weld t a c k tack weld primarily to uh, retain the welds in their uh, uh, welding plates so the plates to be welded in their position so that they don't go out of the position during the welding due to the heating and cooling effect 
okay so if you see the if the weld is made like this so this is the front in the front view you will see the weld cross section like this and the weld will be running along the weld center line like this okay so this we will say as a welding direction okay and the plates to be welded will be placed over some another plate so that the molten metal doesn't flow out this is called backing plate backing plate it provides the desired support to the plates being uh, welded uh, and this uh, uh, it, it, when the edges of the plates to be welded are prepared and then weld be made like this this is called groove weld okay see so this is all about the general or the common terms related with the groove weld and then uh, we'll talk about the fillet weld so fillet welds are made like in different positions like in um, this situation if the two plates a and b are to be joined then one fillet weld will be made like this okay so here this is the face of the weld this is the toe of the weld okay and this is the root of the weld similarly in two t joint also the the weld is uh, made uh, joint is made using these fillets so here also you have root you have toe you have face like this okay and this distance uh, if if i make just one simple uh, fillet like this okay so this is the convex uh, the bead geometry is convex okay and this is the concave view geometry concave view geometry so if the the convex bead geometry then this is the length of the this length of the weld is called trot 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 thickness okay and in case of concave weld trot thickness will be limited to this level and when the weld is straight which early here like this is called uh, the weld bead can be straight fillet weld can be straight also in that case the trot thickness will be equal to this much okay from the root to the perpendicular to the weld be face okay and these, these are the toe of the welds toe of the welds act as a basically the stress razor and most of the time fracture takes place from the toe of the weld so uh, this stress concentration at the toe of the weld is to, should be reduced and uh, to reduce the stress concentration at the toe of the weld various approaches are used like say um, in in case of the t weld joint what we'll be doing we'll just try to make that this uh, the weld is very smooth oh, sorry let me erase this okay okay so here here it will go like this yeah so uh, this will be having the higher uh, stress concentration between the base plate and the weld as compared to the other cases like this where the angle between the bead and the plate is very low that will be reducing the stress concentration okay now as far as uh, the different uh, you know, the terms and the joints are concerned so we will say the types of the joints uh, the different types of the weld joints are categorized based on the orientation or the placement of the components to be joined say uh, the common types of the weld joint uh, common types of the weld joints include butt so where plates are placed in at the same level in same position like this so uh, the edges of the plates to be joined are abutting to each other like this when the plates are um, uh, overlapping each other we called lap joint so one plate when we see that in front view look like looks like this is placed uh, over the another plate like this okay so this is the another plate so it is uh, represented like this simple one plate is placed over the another plate in this simple manner and then joint is made this so with this type of the joint is called lap joint when one plate is placed lapping 
overlapping over the another plate okay then when the, uh, the, the the components to be joined one component is in the horizontal plane another is uh, the vertical one with respect to the earlier one then it is called T joint so obviously this is the horizontal plate and this is the vertical plate and the two, two are placed in a uh, uh, sorry in, in T uh, position so the fillet well will be used to make this kind of the joint so when our it is represented it is represented by using these fillets single fillet or the double fillet and this fillet will be running along the length of the plates uh, the, especially the vertical plate which is being um, joined so this is called a T joint then uh, we have the other um, uh, two more types of the joint uh, that is about the corner joint okay corner joint so when one uh, plate and the another plate or another member to be joined are placed like this so the joint is made at the corner like this using fillets or groove as per the case so <clears throat> the two members are being joined especially at the corner of their uh, 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 their sections or the, um, their uh, geometry uh, then uh, there is a edge joint so in edge joint uh, so here in this case the two are uh, uh, perpendicular to each other but uh, the, the they are um, being connected uh, at their edges or at their ends okay uh, here at the in edge joints the two plates are almost placed parallel like this or maximum inclination between the two is of five degree and then at the edge the joint is made so the one plate and then say another plate okay another plate may have different configurations say this is another component and the two are being joined at the edge okay so it the joint will be running at the edge along the length of the joint so this is the edge joint okay uh, so depending upon the orientation and how the plates to be joined are uh, placed that uh, is used as a basis to classify the different types of the weld joints now we'll talk about the different types of the weld it's a different the types of the joint is different from the types of the weld okay what is that types of the weld is means how the weld metal is being placed okay so there are flat surface is simply applied with the molten metal all along its length like this so if our purpose is just to cover the entire surface of the object to improve the surface properties then we apply the weld bead only at the surface this type of the bead is called bead weld this type of weld is called called bead weld okay uh, then another type of so one is the bead weld okay then there is another type of the weld which is called groove weld in case of the groove weld weld metal is deposited uh, between the like say uh, th this is the uh, base metal say this is the base metal edges have been prepared like this and the groove has been made as per the thickness of the sheet to be joined and then the weld metal is deposited to fill this groove then this type of the weld is called groove weld okay uh, groove weld can be made in the corner joint as well like this uh, this is one this is the another member okay and the, the groove is filled like this okay uh, so the groove weld when some kind of groove is made then it is filled in case and the third is the fillet weld fillet weld okay in fillet weld no edge preparation nothing is needed just the metal is deposited like say in t joint the fillet weld is made like this so this is called fillet weld similarly in the lap joint also fillet weld is made so fillet weld there if fillet is made just one side this is called a single fillet if the fillet is made both the sides it is called a double fillet weld double fillet weld t joint okay uh, so 
we have talked about the bead weld groove weld and fillet weld then there is another very interesting kind of the weld that is about uh, mostly used in the lap joint configurations so what we do we make the hole either of the circular section or of the rectangular shape circular shape or rectangular shape and then this so, so we get a hole on the upper plate first and then the weld metal is deposited so that it fills the gap so in this process uh, we make uh, say this is the top plate and this is the say the bottom plate all right like this okay so we'll be making the hole or the rectangular uh, slot in the top plate and then weld metal is deposited like this so that the connection between the two is made this is called plug weld and when the geometry of this uh, slot is rectangular like this and then fill then the fillet weld is made or the weld metal is deposited this is called the slot weld okay in in both the cases the 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 approach is same in one case the slot is circular in another case when it is circular we call it plug weld and when uh, the slot uh, may, being made in the upper plate is uh, rectangular it is called slot weld okay so these are the five types of the weld these are different from the so the types of the weld is basically about that the way by which weld metal is deposited and the types of the joint is about the way by which the plates being joined are oriented and they are positioned okay now now we'll talk about uh, the kind of uh, edge preparation okay uh, what is the edge preparation okay so let's see uh, if the plates are thin like this say up to 5 mm thickness then whatever whatever heat you apply from the top that may be able to melt through the thickness in one go and you weld the uh, two plates without any much extra effort okay but when the plate thickness becomes more say 20 mm or 50 mm so in that case application of the heat from the top is not able to melt up to the true thickness so the depth up to which you are able to melt that you can certainly call as a penetration but the penetration is incomplete this is the unwelded section so to deal with this challenge what we do in case of thick plates we make the grooves like this okay this is one type of group say so we will remove the material from one side we will remove the material from another side now your heat source can reach up to the root so you make the weld first here then you make weld another then another then another then another that's how the gap is filled in in number of passes okay so to make sure that your heat reaches up to the root in case of heavy section or thick section welding edges are prepared edges are prepared in different ways depending upon the section thickness and the distortion control this is another aspect about which i will talk little later okay so a square groove or no edge preparation will be good only for thin sections up to say 5 mm but if the section thickness increases it is required to prepare the edges of the plates in different ways so what are those edge preparations <coughs> edges can be prepared in following ways a square groove as i said this is primarily used for thin sections only up to 5 mm okay 
then there is a single group when just one group is made of the v geometry like this so fill plates will be prepared this manner okay like this okay. like this. Uh, the plates can, single v this is called single v group preparation single u group preparation so the u group is made like this one side and similarly on another side so the u group geometry when the edges are prepared just one side then it is called b well single v single u single b well okay b well means just there is edge preparation no edge preparation one side and edge preparation is there just on another side only so edge preparation just one side no preparation at another side so this is called b well then single j single j group so in single j group uh, here uh, what we do we make the j group geometry like this uh, and another side it is uh, straight okay so a straight side can be either side idea is to make sure that heat reaches up to the root in all the cases okay but uh, if you see another important aspect here is the minimum volume to be deposited minimum volume of the well metal to be deposited in these cases will be for j minimum and maximum metal to be deposited will be for this case okay then we have the u after the j there is a u so next better because if more metal is to be deposited more time it will take more cost it will require okay then uh, the b well okay so th these are the cases where the groove is made just one side okay uh, this is the groove geometry uh, representation or of the b well and this is representation of the j right when the groups are made both the sides like this sorry uh, groups are made both the sides so then what kind of geometry double then we get the situation of the double v double u double j double b well okay double uh, b well so in that case the groups are made both the sides like this groups are made both the sides right and a filling is needed from both the sides this helps to reduce the volume of the well metal to be deposited and used in heavy sections greater than 25 mm or so double v double u double j group geometries are used so in case of the w again it will be coming like this so you have to make uh, the u group geometry both the sides okay similarly we can make the double v well so here one side is straight and then other side like this okay the double b well so one side b well and another side b well okay and similarly single j double j so you can make it like this so one and right so this is how uh, it is done okay this are so these are the different edge preparations the single and double double edge preparations are needed when the heavy sections or thick sections are welded while the single v will be fine with the somewhat thinner sections and for very thin sections less than 5 mm usually square group geometry are, are made or no special edge preparation like v u j is needed you know uh, if the group geometry is simple square like this it will not require any metal to be deposited from outside you have to just fuse the edges of the plates to be to bring the uh, bring the things in multiple state and uh, for solidification to develop the joint so this is the uh, most preferred one but if the section thickness is more certainly we have to go for uh, the 
other options okay now the another important thing is the welding position position welding okay uh, when the plates to be welded are simply placed in the horizontal position like this okay this is called flat welding okay when the plates are in her vertical position but the or uh, orientation of the plates where weld is to be made is vertical the weld plane is vertical but the weld line is horizontal this is called horizontal welding position okay so flat one where the plates are the horizontal as well as the weld is also made in horizontal plane this is called flat okay horizontal weld the plates are in vertical position but the weld line is horizontal this is called horizontal weld when the plates are in vertically oriented okay placed vertically and the weld line is also vertical this is called vertical welding and when the plates are over the head metal is deposited like say from the bottom side here so you the plates are uh, placed over the head and the metal is deposited in the bottom side in this case metal will have the tendency to fall down this is called overhead welding position so the four welding positions flat horizontal vertical and overhead in overhead position the metal is placed uh, in the direction opposite to the gravity over the head molten metal will have tendency to fall down the same will also be there but not so much in case of the vertical and horizontal because the plate positions are vertical in both the cases in uh, uh, the orientation of the weld line is vertical in vertical welding and orientation of the weld line is horizontal despite of uh, having the vertical position of the plates to be welded vertical uh, the, this is called a horizontal welding uh, position and in the flat one primarily we have the horizontal plates and the weld line is also horizontal okay so uh, this uh, is what i wanted to explain using the whiteboard maybe i'll show you something using the ppt okay i have already talked about this butt lap corner t and edge joint okay then uh, these edge preparations straight or square single v double v single bevel double bevel single u double u single j double j i have already talked about this uh, these are like uh, i haven't talked maybe uh, but these are the different ways by which the joints are made uh, butt joint uh, butt joint again with the double uh, groove preparation single v preparation double v groove preparation this is how the molten metal is deposited in number of passes to make the butt joint here in the first case it is a square groove uh, a square uh, butt joint second is uh, this is the double square where uh, the, there is no edge preparation but the bell metal is deposited from both the sides this is the single v groove uh, the just v groove is prepared that is shown by the dotted line and the bell metal is deposited in three passes okay and many passes are needed for uh, the double v groove preparation the t joint here uh, the again the groove has been made in this particular case that is what is represented by these dotted lines although it many times it is not needed also but sometimes if the section thickness is more then to realize the through thickness penetration the grooves are made so this is a typical case where double b well groove t joint is being made by depositing the two uh, uh by using the two passes and here uh, there is no uh, edge preparation just uh, the fillet weld is made to make the t joint so this is the difference 
no edge preparation just metal is deposited this is the concave bead all right uh, uh, in both the cases this is the concave bead there is no edge preparation but here there is edge preparation using the a groove is being made so bevel groove is being made double bevel groove is being made for making the t joint similarly here the groove is made one side and there is no groove as so this is a fillet weld this is the groove this is a fillet weld this is a groove weld okay for the corner joint and the two fillet welds in the corner joints no edge preparation directly the weld is made okay uh, i have already talked about the flat position uh, the welding positions uh, the two plates in the flat positions and the weld line is also horizontal the flat plate plates are in vertical position and weld line is also vertical in the horizontal the plates are in vertical position but the weld line is horizontal and in overhead the weld uh, the plates are in over the head the metal is deposited against the gravity metal will have tendency to fall down so it it, it, it is most difficult position to apply the molten metal because it will have tendency to fall down these are the different types of the fusion welds or the types of the welds so bead weld as i say primarily used for surfacing or modifying the surface characteristics by depositing just bead on the surface then the groove is made and the weld metal is deposited in case of the groove weld and in a fillet weld uh, no edge preparation just the metal is deposited at the edges and uh, the plate between the components to be joined and in the plug weld uh, the 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 upper plate is provided with the or made a slot of circular or a rectangular section then weld metal is deposited in the slot this is uh, the uh, rectangular shape uh, about the common words i have already talked uh, like uh, this is the weld metal being deposited base metal root face this is the kind of uh, this zone horizontal state portion is uh, this is state portion is uh, the root this is the root gap the weld face and this is the toe of the weld here this is the toe of the weld in case of the so this is also the toe of the weld here and this is the root already there this is the root of the weld uh, and this is the penetration uh, throat, throat thickness indicating the throat thickness the root of the weld fusion weld etc and if uh, uh, this will, will be the high stress zone so we make efforts to reduce the bead angle so basically uh, this uh, angle is called bead angle it should be less like say 10 15 degrees is the most preferred one but say if it is too high like this maybe it is 90 degree or 80 degrees so that it causes the higher stress concentration so these are the different common words i have already talked about all these uh, crater i haven't talked but about others uh, so this uh, entire show uh, sections hatched section in molten state is called weld pool or weld puddle okay now that is what this uh, weld puddle is there the root tack tack already talked to torch all these cases all these things i have already talked deposition rate and the crater these are the two things which i have left let's say what is the crater like whenever the weld is made like this say you are welding continuously and say you stop here this is the weld position so molten metal will shrink and will form some kind of the depression here so there this depression or the cavity being formed wherever the weld is being stopped that is called crater okay this is the most sensitive zone for cracking and at which rate we are depositing the molten metal that is called the deposition rate it is usually quantified in terms of the kg hour say for the uh, gas tungsten arc welding this is very low say about 1 kg per hour and for some arc welding processes like say it is uh, about 10 to 15 kg 10 to 15 kg per hour so deposition rate directly affects the productivity or the rate at which the metal is being uh, deposited okay so uh, these are all the things related uh, with the general terms about this also i have talked like uh, in the gas welding a mixture of acetylene c2h2 and the oxygen is used well, these burn and produce the uh, you can say 18.7 uh, 18.7 5 megajoule 
paramem cube of uh, the acetylene and generates the high temperature in the inner cone of 3100 degree centigrade. Uh, despite of high heat generation in the secondary zone, uh, we get the lower temperature. It has the bluish flame. This is the white uh, cone. Inner cone is white because of the high temperature. Okay. And uh, you can see here the different fuel gases, these are mixed with the oxygen or with the air as well, okay, to cut down the cost. Otherwise, mostly it is oxygen. That's why we call it oxy fuel welding process, okay. When it, it is oxyacetylene only, then we call it as an oxyacetylene uh, welding process. Okay, so in uh, the kind these gases, each gas generates the different amount of heat and different peak temperature. So the maximum heat, if you see the maximum temperature is generated by the acetylene, which is needed for the faster melting is of 3100 degrees centigrade. Total heat being generated by the acetylene, although it is low, lower uh, as far as the sum of the primary and the secondary heat is concerned. Okay. In the propylene uh, generates around 16.38 and 71, but the heat generated is 88 kilojoule, uh, uh, like megajoule of uh, the per mmq of the fuel gas. So if you see the maximum is of the propane, but the peak temperatures are low. So despite of high heat generation, if the temperature is high temperature is not realized, the melting will be difficult. That's why we prefer to go for acetylene over the other gases. Okay, so uh, like these are the different reactions to produce the acetylene. What we do, we use the calcium carbide mixture. It is added in water. So the calcium uh, acetylene is produced and calcium hydroxide is uh, uh, formed as a byproduct. Okay, these are the reactions of the primary and the secondary zones. There are three types of the flames in the oxy fuel welding. One is called a neutral flame. In case of the neutral flame, whatever oxygen is there, that is enough to burn the fuel perfectly. So there is no unburned fuel. There is no extra oxygen. If that is the case, so ratio of the oxygen is one, fuel is one, both are burning perfectly, nothing is left unburned, then it is called neutral flame. Okay, this is the best situation. This is the most desirable one okay temperature is also high of 3100 which is good enough to weld number of things but when we have the skewedness in the proportion of the oxygen and nitrogen we get the, the two other types of flame when oxygen is more say 1.2 as compared to the one of the acetylene or fuel gas we get the oxidizing flame okay and we we have the more fuel and for a given oxygen say 1.2 of the fuel as compared to the one volume of the oxygen we get the carburizing flame okay carburizing flame because there is always some left fuel some amount of the fuel left to be burned. So incomplete burning leads to the carburized flame. Okay. So whenever there is a carburized flame, we get the additional flame, additional cone. So normally there, a, there are two cones like this, inner cone and outer cone. But when we have the extra fuel, it generates the intermediate cone this is called intermediate feather its length depends upon the volume of extra fuel more the unburned fuel higher the content of unburned fuel coming in greater will be the uh, uh, intermediate flame greater will be the size of the intermediate flame it, if it is less or it is more so less means less extra unburned fuel less proportion of the extra fuel okay this is called intermediate flame feather indicative of the carburizing flame 
it is primarily used for the welding of low carbon steels or for welding of the hard facing welds means for to deposit the uh, the weld beads for increasing the wear resistance for increasing the hardness because carburizing flame transfers some amount of carbon to the iron which helps in increasing the hardness wear resistance okay on the other hand when you have just extra oxygen say 1.2 oxygen proportion as compared to the one of the fuel then we find lot of noise and high oxygen tends to increase the metal oxide formation tendency this in turn increases the defect formation tendency like inclusions in the weld metal oxidizing flames are preferred for welding of the non ferrous some of the non ferrous metals like copper zinc and ferrous metals like cast iron and manganese steels okay so that's all about the uh, uh, about the re things related with this today uh, remaining things uh, uh, will be uh, covered after the midterm i believe i don't know uh, so tomorrow also i have a lecture class so tomorrow i hope that this section will be completed uh, let's see i hope i will be able to start the uh, gas welding will be completed and uh, some basic things related with the arc welding will be started okay so that's all for the day uh,